think so. <laughs> or the camera. So, so. All right, folks, welcome. This is Lieutenant Dan at the world famous Moscow movie set. And today we're sitting on the Franklin Ranch building, which served as the sheriff's office and the best Western ever made, Tom Horn. And speaking of Tom Horn, I'm lucky enough to have two cast members from that movie. First, we have Jack Wester and Billy Brown. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. I want to get right to it. Let me ask you, first of all, uh, if you could each tell us what the roles you played in Tom Horn. I uh, actually started out as an extra and ended up being chosen to be the kid deputy. The kid deputy. And how would the folks uh, remember that in the movie? Could you run through the scene with uh, that? I, the scene I was in, the main scene was when Steve McQueen had broken out of the jail and came down looking for weapons. Mm -hmm. And he took, I came in from the stables across the street and he took me hostage and we walked out of here and he beat me to death. <laughs> Did he actually make contact? Uh, a little. A little? And, and that, that building was right behind the theater, correct? Right, right straight back through this pass and right behind here. Okay. And Bill, how about you? I was hired to ride his horse and um, at the beginning it's the first day I met him and I had no clue my father was a, a wrangler on it and um, dad was friends with pretty much everybody and he um, saw me there and there had been an accident with the original stuntman that was hired for it and they rolled a jeep and he was all black and blue so next day they asked me to be there and I rode his horse and we matched pretty good and so every time he's going fast on a horse and the horse that was shot out from under me and um, I rode the bucking horse but I was his stuntman for it. Actually this right here where we're sitting was the first day Steve had a camera set up just like this here. It was snowing. Nobody in town. Yeah, I remember that. There was a hitching post right there, uh -huh. and he had me just ride in, walk in slow on my horse, turn, stop at the hitching post, get off, tie my horse up, and walk into the room there. That and that's was, you, not Steve McQueen. That was my first, about that? first day. How so. about that? And I overheard you earlier talking, uh, you said in the scene when, with the um, windmill, uh, when yes, the guys sir, were there were times that Steve, he liked to, he was behind the camera, even when it was for him. Then I stood in for, I do, I, I would do whatever action. So then he was, I mean, there was a director, but he pretty much wanted to, he set up the shots, remember? Yeah, every one of them. Yeah. No nope. kidding. Every um, shot. Interesting. So, I mean, I carried a 45, 60, 70, or whatever, I don't remember, 60. And it was heavy, so I had to ride as fast as I could. You know, and remember that rifle. And, um, but he pretty much, it was his call on the shots. Yeah. So. Well, Jack, I uh, want to ask you first about your overall, is there anything we as historians here at the set could benefit from what you experienced there as we're giving tours to the public? Hmm. Anything in particular you want to point out? Or tell us about your experience on set. Guy, it's, it's a long time ago. Uh, I, I, the snow. I remember they had the snow blowers set up. These were this was like a couple snow, of though. yeah, a <laughs> couple of days they were gonna shoot snow on the ground here, mm -hmm. and that night it snowed. Snowed. And snow, snow was, was really all authentic. Hard. What we're looking yeah, at in the movie. Okay. The, the snow on the ground was real, okay. and it was cold. Yeah, we used to have to get dressed up in the top of the, the, hotel. the, the oh, hotel. The mercantile. The mercantile, uh -huh. yeah, that was our dressing room. And there was wind whipping through there every time. And <laughs> it still was, is. It was cold. It was cold a lot of days. Now, how about when you were filming, uh, specifically the scene when you get kidnapped, let's say, by Tom Horn, and also when you filmed the execution scene, how many days did that take you to do all that? We did. This one in three takes. No kidding. Three takes. The one up top, 
probably a dozen or more because people kept looking at the cameras. Ah. And yeah, it was. That took a while. I, they dropped in how many? Yeah, a, a good was, dozen times yeah, out of that. Was, sometimes, and I remember he would go over the scene before, not to waste people's time. And yeah. And and he knew what he wanted to see and. A couple of them were one takes, two takes, and go, move. Yeah, yeah. Time's money, and you know, he was a He didn't waste time. Mm -hmm. He didn't waste any Loved time. Loved to work, and he just, he was respectful, and um, he got behind the camera. He wanted to see what it looked like. Thank um, you. Yeah. Well, Billy, I have to ask you this. Uh, so we know that the scenes, uh, are comfortable that the scenes were filmed here in Moscow, but like, the scene with you at the windmill when he goes to get revenge and on the, the Sharks rough. Ranch over there in Patagonia. We oh, okay. Most <coughs> we started here mm -hmm. and then it moved out. We went we went on location to the okay. Sharks Ranch where they had the big party, the lobsters, the bug, you know. Yeah. And um, so the scenes when when he would chase down the bad guys, mm -hmm. I'd ride it like hell wanted it fast mm -hmm. and then one day I had to do <laughs> I had to get underneath the horse and lay down in the sunset <laughs> remember yep, that yep. shot? I do Very so well. I got to do it first and I mean I grew up with horses so mm -hmm. I didn't I, they didn't I wasn't afraid of them and, and you know things can happen the scene when he gets beat up by the by the boxer mm -hmm. When he crawls underneath the mother, he calls it the mother-in-law horse. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, they wanted that horse to kick in there, remember? Yep. So they did bring in another horse, and but they kind of cut that out. But that's where that laying underneath your horse is protection. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. But and I, I remember watching the, the uh, special effects people mm -hmm. when they're in those the, the, the stables. Mm -hmm. And he blows that guy's head off. Right. That was that was a one take. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That was a one take. When the guy was chopping up the meat. Yeah. Okay. And he ducked down and he, McQueen shot him and yeah, that was that was really something to watch. Wow. Yeah, I had to run through the cattle that night at him. Oh, is that right? He's scuffling through yeah. the herd of cattle that are in there. You hear the spurs jingling? And he yeah. It was my first movie. And I'll be darned. After Same that, here. I went into the Marine Corps, and I Rah. just in my mind, I stayed with me forever. And um, when I got out, I had a job working in the movies again. So, and I'm how many have you done since then? Oof. Can't count <laughs> honestly. I I counted about a year, two years ago, and I was over close to 300. Wow. So the latest were Django Unchained, um, Three Tended Yuma, um, Lone Ranger were the last, and I did one where I was injured. I had double surgery on my left shoulder and a brand new hip. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I worked up till three years ago, four years ago, and I'm on my way back. Well, congratulations. And I, Glad you're I, still with us. I train horses to fall, and they're outlawing horses, to, to falling horses on, on films, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to L.A. We're going to L.A., my wife and I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach them and just show that I'm going to build a pit, make a, make a pit for my horse to fall in, and tuck and roll with me. Mm -hmm. I take them in a right lead, take them. So I'm not the one breaking in the old days, and in those days, they tripped horses. Mm -hmm. They killed them. They mm -hmm. broke their necks, and it was not pretty. So if I can, you know, pass something on, I, I've trained fallen horses since in Euro Disney. I fell a horse in a show. 450 times before I was injured. Wow. And I brought him straight over backwards and chased buffalo. So I tuck and roll with my horse. I make sure they're in shape. And, and they're
They're not injured. They're my best friends. So. Mm -hmm. The Crow Stars. Yeah, there's without them, we're nada, you know. It's well, you mentioned about Patagonia. So, is that where they also did the love scene with uh, Linda was, Evans? Uh, one yeah. of the, the water tanks. tanks. I was, okay. Yeah. I had to stand there and hold their horses. <laughs> oh, okay. I was a kid that morning, man. I looked away, but it was. It well, I know one thing for posterity's sake we're going to be interested in is, of course, the personalities <laughs> of Slim Pickens, Steve McQueen, and, and uh, Richard Farnham. I know you and I talked earlier oh, about it, yeah. for everybody else, if you could give us your yeah, opinion. We, we sat over on the porch over there and right around lunchtime every day and Slim Pickens and Richard would sit there and they, Slim Pickens had a picking string and he used to try to rope the little mice there and come out from underneath <laughs> the porch and he had hit them most of the time. Is that right? Yeah, he was pretty wow. good. Him and Richard Great used man. to bet on that. <laughs> a lot of fun. Riding the, tour, the bus back to the Hilton all the time together with all the cats and everybody. Well, how long did, were you guys on Did you go to the party afterwards? Yeah, in Nogales? No, the one down at Skate Country and By that next time, to the Bucks. Kid. No, no, no. You weren't old enough. I wasn't either very much. <laughs> I was barely, but... No, I didn't go. I was famous. I didn't need to be. Oh, I got you. <laughs> How long were you got? Was the production? Do you remember the whole production here at Moscow? Well, I started in mid December. But it wasn't all here. It was. I and only worked a couple of weeks here. Did up you? till the end of March, I think yeah. I was out here. Here in Moscow? Yeah. Okay. I remember the 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 scene where he shoots. Um, what was that friend of ours? His teamster shot his toe off. Remember? Oh, uh, what was that man's name? Big black bearded guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, He's the one that shoots and they jerk that horse out from underneath him. He was. Uh, what he part of the uh, wardrobe uh, crew? Yeah, he was. He was, and he was. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. That's not good. We should have practiced this a little. <laughs> That's all right. But uh, no, the scene when, and they didn't know how, remember they wanted the horse in, were you here that morning when the whole gang was over here and they were laughing at him and that's when he came out and challenged Steve McQueen, Tom Horn. Mm, I don't know if I was And he sure. shot him in the toe. You yeah. Remember the movie? Yep. I that one movie. ranch out. And, uh, yeah. So we just hobbled this horse, and you can see where he breaks the hobble in the scene. But um, Well, you just brought up something. You said when they jerked the horse out from under you. So you were Tom when he goes to kill the cattle wrestler, and he mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. something and about I'm a hero. Here, all I could do is shoot and then bam. Yeah. Me out. And then that, burned his that was a little cruel wow. on the cruel side. Yeah. The ratchet. Wow. So, and they don't do those anymore. And the outlawed and the Humane Society came in and kind of put a damper on the yeah. stunts a little bit. But, you know, I was always about safety since the Marine Corps. And my animals have been my best friends. So I always worried about them more than I did myself. So, and it can be done. Mm -hmm. The action can be there and it can be safe. But everybody has to... You know, be serious about it. You know, you can walk through things. Right. You know, just, just so. So, Jack, we know you were 17 at the time. How old were you, Billy? I was like just going to be, I think, 20, 20 years old or so. And a stand-in for Steve McQueen. Yeah. How about that? I called. I, <laughs> in those days, you know, it's like you didn't know. And, and, and my dad was there. So, to me, I don't even remember even getting paid. But I did get paid, but it went to my dad. So I got two for one. And then right after that, I went to Mexico, and and actually there were a few days left, so I played baseball in Mexico. So I kind of did. That's why I wasn't at the party, probably. Yeah. But um, winter ball started in Mexico, mm -hmm. and um, that's when I caught Fernando Valenzuela. And, no and when I came back and they signed Fernando, 
Tommy Lasorda says, who's this guy? And, and I told him, that's where I was raised in Mexico, where Fernando came from, right in Guanajuato. And um, then that's when I went to boot camp and I heard Steve was in Mexico with cancer. Mm -hmm. So I actually went in UA to get down there to help him in Mexico. No kidding. And he died. Wow. So, and then I came back, told my CEO what I had done and what had happened. He looked it up and saw I wasn't lying. And, but I was, I, it was too late. You know, I didn't know he went down to Mexico to get some kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, chemo, chemo therapy. or something. Yeah, just chemotherapy. And I heard about it, so I was gone. I was, mm. I was in San Diego doing my ITS, and um, I heard about it. And when I asked my, drill, you know, my instructor, he said, "Yeah, right. You know, no one believed me." But um, I said, "Yeah, I worked with Steve, and he's a friend." And, and then I went, you know, down to Mexico. But he had just died the day before. And um, it's uh, something that really kind of haunted me. For a long time, yeah. Because he was, everybody said he was this and that. He was nice to me and knew Very it was nice. my first movie and mm -hmm. didn't yell and scream. He didn't. He heard people talking. He was polite enough to say, you know, respect what I'm doing and I'll respect you. You know, so you treat people like you want to be treated. I learned from him, and so, but I miss him. It was fun, and sometimes I think, did it really happen, you know? Mm. Because it wasn't all, you know? Yeah, I know it was for you, too. Oh, well, still is. You know, people were a little nicer to you. <laughs> to where before some, they wouldn't some, even talk Some to a lot you. nicer. All of a sudden, you have a lot of friends, right? Yeah. So I've learned to <coughs> judge those people, too. And Billy, since you've been here, have you had a chance to go into our, the theater and see where the relive where the gallows are hung up? No, I guess I haven't. No. You haven't gone in? We I can do that, that after this. Okay. It's nice. It, I remember that like yesterday. Yeah. And we have still have the, you can tell where the window was made okay, into a door up there uh -huh. to walk Tom in. My father played the preacher that reads here in the last right when Sam Pimp, uh, Slim Pickin introduces. Yeah. This is J.P.S. Brown. That's my right. father. No kidding. So I'll be darned. Yeah. Well, I told Jack earlier, I, in my opinion, uh, aside from it being the greatest Western, I mm -hmm. think it is very underrated. I think it's a beautifully told story, and it's just very done in a very classy way. Yes. Yeah. And pretty much to the point. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to thank you two for being part of that movie. Uh, like I said, it is it is my favorite and probably always will be. And I appreciate you guys having a role in that. Right. And thanks for taking your time today thank to, you. to talk to us about All right, that. Thank so you. That was forever. All right, gentlemen, appreciate it. Rod Devil Dog, right. thank you. Thank you. We good, Albert? <laughs>